Hey, it's me again. Can we talk? Welcome to Monday, the 17th of August. Welcome to my Tricraftual channel. And if you haven't been here before, welcome. If you've been here before, welcome back. Please, if you would, reach down and give me a thumbs up if you like the content of this video. And also consider subscribing to my channel. Please, please, please. I'm trying to grow my little subscriber list. So it's Monday. Um, it's a nice day here in New Jersey. Not too hot. Um, you know, it's been pleasant all day. And today I wanted to talk about some of my personal crafting must-haves. Um, I've been crafting for years and years, longer than some of you have been alive, I'm sure. And I have acquired things that I really like, um, that are helpful to me, that I think that you might like. And so I thought I would do a video today talking about some of them. Now, these are not all of the wonderful things that I have acquired over the years or all of the wonderful things that I think um, are helpful when one crafts. But these are things that are very helpful to me. And there are things that are portable because as I've said before, I do not have a dedicated craft space. So I hope that you enjoy the list and give me a comment below and let me know what are your must-haves? What are the things that you found that are absolutely necessary for your craft journey and how they're helpful to you. So here we go. Okay, so this is my favorite little table. It's actually um, sold, I think, as a TV tray, but because I don't have any dedicated space for crafting, um, having this table is just wonderful. Um, it has, adjustable leg heights so you can make it higher or lower. Um, you can pull it up to a chair if need be, and you probably can pull it up to your bed, depending on how high your bed is. Um, I bought this, I don't know what year, probably 2013, 2014 from Amazon and I have put the link there because they still sell the table. Uh, the only thing I would do differently is probably get the black, which they now sell, because um, you can see there's some stains on the white one and it's clean, but the stains just don't come out. So I probably would not get the white one again. But since I moved from place to place with all my craft stuff, this table is invaluable. I absolutely love it. Okay, so this is my absolute favorite uh, lamp. It is, as you can see, a floor lamp, a floor model. Um, it is adjustable and it is a magnifying light. I originally purchased it to uh, work my needlepoint with, but as I've gotten older, I've found more and more reasons to use it. Um, I purchased it on Amazon in 2014. I've never had any problem with it. I'm still using it, the same uh, lights, no problem. And I think it's a fantastic item. Um, I have provided the link below so that if you're interested, and I did get it on Amazon, and there are different varieties um, that are very similar, but this is very adjustable, um, and I just love it. You can also take that piece out there and make it a table lamp, so it does double duty. Um, I wouldn't be without it. I absolutely love it, and it's light, and it's fairly portable if you have to move it from place to place. So that is my go-to light. Okay, so my next item is my System 4 lap or table uh, needlepoint frame. 
and you can see there you attach the needle point in there and so it projects out and it gives you an area to work on without having to hold the needle point. The needle point itself has to be on stretcher bars. Um, when I started needle pointing 40 some years ago probably, um, you held your needle point in your hand and it ended up being extremely warped depending on what stitches you used, mostly continental stitch and that is the stitch that warps the canvas the most so that you end up with it stretched all in one direction. Now we use stretcher bars and staple or uh, tack the canvas to the stretcher bars so that it does not have the opportunity to warp like that. And then you fit it into this frame here and then you can needle point without having to hold it. And it's a fabulous, fabulous um, invention. This system four is extremely expensive. Um, I was still working full time when I bought it. It was a splurge. Um, I don't regret it because it has been invaluable in helping me needlepoint, but it is a very expensive item. Uh, you can get cheaper frames, you can get floor frames um, to hold your work. This suited me best because it's portable, I can move it again from place to place, and um, it holds the needlepoint well. So I did spend the money on it and I'm not sorry. So this is a system four, uh, and they call it the uh, lap or table uh, frame. At any rate, I love it. Okay, this is my next uh, go-to tool, and that's my Nitty Knotty, which I made from PVC pipe, following the instructions of Rebecca of Chemnitz, and it is used to turn yarn into a skein. Uh, sometimes you have a ball of yarn and you need to turn that ball of yarn back into a skein so that you can dye it, or you have taken a large ball or, or skein of yarn and broken it down and then you need to reskein it. And so that's what this is. It's called a Nitty Knotty. And let's see if I turn it that way, you can see. It took me a minute to get the hang of it, of using it. But once I did, um, it was fine and I absolutely love it. It works fairly quickly as long as your yarn's not tangled in any way. And uh, you can have it in a skein in short order. So, uh, in uh, Rebecca's video, which I'll link to on making it, she tells you the dimensions that she used. Um, and then you have to cut the PVC pipe, put the end caps on, and voila, you have a homemade nitty knotty. Again, an invaluable tool. Sharp craft scissors. I don't think that anyone ever has enough of these. Um, I just bought uh, three for some price. I'm not sure, but I can also put that link in from Amazon because I have different projects I'm working on. And as I've said, I have no dedicated space, so I may be in different rooms. And I have a pair of these scissors. They're sharp, they're small, they're portable, and I can use them for knitting, crocheting, needlepoint, or weaving. So they are a multifunctional um, item, and everyone that crafts has to have scissors, and you probably have different kinds, but I found these small ones, small sharp ones, to be excellent. Needles one of uh, the next items that are must-have for crafters. And this is just a needle case that I've had for years. Actually got it uh, Vogue Knitting Live some years ago. Um, these are different kinds of needles. Um, this came with the small mini loom that I just purchased recently. 
um, and so I can use this for weaving. It's, it's not my favorite, um, but it can be used for weaving. I also use this, these needles for weaving my small pro projects. And I also use them, and these are just different versions um, of this needle, these three. Uh, I also use them for uh, sewing in ends on needle, on um, crochet and knitting. Um, I also can use this one um, or one similar to that in needlepoint. You have to be careful uh, using this in your projects because this one happens to have a sharp point. So um, you only use them for certain things. So I have a variety of needles. I have a couple of these cases that I keep needles in and I just purchased some more of these because doggone it, as I get older, I guess age is part of it. Um, having too much stuff around is another part. I lose these doggone things. I have them, I'm working on a project and the next thing I know, I can't find the needle. Now on a needle point, you can actually attach uh, what they call a needle minder uh, which is magnetized and you can put it on your frame and so your needles are always there and that's fantastic. I can't do that to my weaving, but I'm going to figure out a way, maybe Velcro a little spot up in the corner of my uh, weaving when I'm using uh, needles so that I can stick the needle up there if I'm not actively using it. But needles are essential for craft pro projects and so I, I wouldn't be without them. Like I said, every craft I do requires the use of a needle. So I talked earlier about um, needlepoint, and this is a small needlepoint that I'm working on. Um, here up in the corner, you can see that the needles are on a magnet, um, and there's a magnet on the other side. Oops, one left the magnet. Um, but that's how you keep them on needlepoint, which is great so that you don't lose them. Um, the other thing that I wanted to show you is another go-to invaluable, and that's stretcher bars. These are stretcher bars. They come in a set um, with varying sizes, and you get one the closest to the size of your needlepoint, and then you just uh, fit the pieces together because you're, they're reusable. And then in this case, I got them at the needlepoint store and um, they put the stretcher bars, they stapled the canvas to the stretcher bars. Now, over time, and I've been working on and off on this campus for, canvas for a long time, um, it has become a little slack. So I am going to pull up the staples and tighten it again um, so that the canvas doesn't end up being warped because I am using a lot of um, continental stitch on this, which is a very warping, easy to use, easy to do stitch, but it warps the canvas terribly. So I will tighten them. But stretcher bars are another go-to for me. Um, they weren't invented, as far as I know, when I started needlepointing 40 some years ago. But wow, what a great, great invention, and I would not be without them. Um, you can certainly get them online at needlepointing um, suppliers or needlepoint stores. If you have a local needlepoint store, certainly support them if they sell stretcher bars. Uh, order them from them. They do not always have them in hobby shops because needlepoint is not that popular in the big box stores. So I find very little I can use for needlepoint in them. However, um, you can find them and they are a wonderful thing to keep your needlepoint from warping. Another item that I keep always is one or more Sharpies. Now, Sharpies are uh, permanent markers and I have used them on needlepoint canvas, blank needlepoint canvas, but be very careful and make sure that uh, there's no bleeding because you do not want to ruin your beautiful uh, needlepoint threads. Uh, so make sure that your marker is um, definitely waterproof and that it won't rub off. 
I just ordered some markers that I can use for needlepoint and for weaving, and we'll see how they work. They are what they call disappearing uh, ink after, I think, a week. Uh, the ink goes away, or so it's supposed to. And I will uh, try it on some uh, warp that I have done for weaving and see if it works. Um, I wouldn't put it on anything expensive, but I'll check. If it works, that's great, because then you can draw your design onto the warp, your warp threads in your weaving, or onto your blank needlepoint canvas, and then work the shapes or designs that you have, just knowing that within seven or so days, those lines are gonna disappear. Um, but I think they're fantastic to have. I wouldn't be without them, certainly wouldn't be without my Sharpies um, for crafting in general. Next item, stitch markers. Um, I have different sizes. I have different kinds uh, depending on what I'm working on. Sometimes I like the interlocking because I can actually make sure that they don't come out of a stitch. When I'm working on my 10 stitch blanket, knitted blanket, I like to attach the uh, stitch marker physically to a stitch. Um, and when I am knitting like my socks, I just have them um, in the row. So as you can see here, I have a stitch marker marking the end or beginning, depending on how you're looking at it, of my row on the sock I'm working on. So they are invaluable. Um, there are fancy ones, people make them, there are jeweled ones. Um, it doesn't really matter whichever kind you like, but I think they also would work for, obviously for crochet also. If you have to mark the beginning or end of a row or need to mark a particular stitch, um, they are fantastic to have. This is an old fashioned click at the top uh, row counter. And I personally prefer this kind. They have all kinds of sophisticated row counters. They have some digital, um, but I like the fact that I can go back. Um, I'm doing a project where I do 20 rows knit and then I do four rows purl. And so I can start this over again at the end of 20 and uh, keep track of my four and then go back. Uh, so I happen to like this one. I just purchased a second one because again, I'm working on multiple projects and I don't want to lose count. So I purchased another one. I think I paid $8 for it. And if I can find it, I'll put the link to this down there. Some people pre prefer the more sophisticated ones, but uh, this one is fine for me. Okay, so if you're a seamstress, then you probably have a larger version of this. But this is a cutting board um, that has proved invaluable um, for me using with um, needlepoint canvas. Um, I've just cut some items here recently for a project that I was working on. Um, I got this at one of the craft stores. I'm sure you can find them everywhere. Um, and it is a fantastic thing to have if you have to cut uh, so that you're not cutting on your tables or other surfaces. And um, I just love it. It's a cutting mat. So that is another tool that I find invaluable. And measuring tapes. Um, I keep a soft one uh, for measuring uh, my wrists or you know, for measuring person, a person, body measurements, because you need a soft tape. And I keep the other one for measuring a whole variety of things, um, keeping track of the top and bottom of my weaving, um, because I need to leave a certain distance at both ends. Uh, and so I find it invaluable. Most people have a billion of these things around the house. I try to keep track of them so that I know where they are uh, when I need them. 
and I actually have uh, three or four right now that I can put my hands on. But again, a, an invaluable tool for all sorts of crafting. So I would uh, recommend if you don't have one or two, uh, make sure that you pick them up so that when you need them, you have them. And lastly, I guess you'd say, is my iPad and my Apple Pencil, um, which I find invaluable. I am trying to go paperless, so I keep my notes in um, my iPad. I have started doing designs for my weaving, um, sketching out as badly as I draw, sketching things, and I'm keeping them in a section of my iPad. Also, um, I am looking forward to the Knit Picks Dyer Supplier um, Dive Into Dyeing uh, class. Um, and I am going to keep my dye journal also in my iPad. So for me personally, it's invaluable. I'm not, um, I'm not good with notebooks and I start and then I stop. Um, but I found that I love writing in my iPad with my Apple Pencil, which was an additional purchase, uh, but I absolutely love it.